No more baseball nights in New York for 2022, folks. No Subway Series. <laughs> no chance. The Yankees have been eliminated. They were swept. I repeat, they didn't win a single game. They were swept at home. I watched the Houston Astros celebrate on that field with Frank Sinatra as the soundtrack. Are you serious? They figured out the most embarrassing way to go out. They figured out how to humiliate the entire fan base. They may have set this organization back 13 years, which was the last time they made it to the World Series. And conveniently enough, the Astros go back. That's the new dynasty. The Yankees used to be a dynasty. Congratulations to the Houston Astros. They're back in the World Series. Six ALC S appearances in a row. And they meet the Philadelphia Phillies, Yankees South who also get back to the World Series before the Yankees do. Keith McPherson joining you, 6.30 to, I think, 7.50 before Monday Night Football, before the Brooklyn Nets face the Memphis Grizzlies out in Tennessee. We'll get to that, and there's plenty of football to get to. Jets fans, congratulations. Giants fans, congratulations. At least you have that to roll right into. If you're like me, you... Tuck your Yankee stuff in the back of the closet. You put it in a bag. You store it away for the winter because you just can't stand to look at it. And you'd be a crazy person to wear it outside and have to have conversations about these New York Yankees. I could be having this conversation in a bodega or the group chat, but I'm blessed and thankful to have it right here on WFAN tonight. This is my first season covering the New York Yankees, being on every night after the Yankees postseason and or postgame, and man, what a postseason it was not. Reminder that they went down in the DS to the Cleveland Guardians. They were down 2-1, backs against the wall, had to win back-to-back games. And then, <laughs> since they, you know, took eight days to complete that series, couldn't be easy, they went into the... ALCS without a break, but with this idea and this plan that they were going to play a six, seven game series. So in game one, you don't do everything to steal game one. You kind of punt that away with your decisions and you play for later days. But I came here Wednesday night and I told you after that game, they're on sweep watch. They're on sweep alert. The Houston Astros haven't lost a game this postseason. In the regular season, you saw Enough evidence to tell you the Astros were much better than the Yankees. But I'm a Yankees fan. I love the New York Yankees. I don't know what my life would be like if I didn't decide as a young kid that that was cool. Watching the Yankees win World Series. That was cool. Watching Derek Jeter's whole career. I want to be a part of it. No one wants to be a part of this. The Yankees dynasty, that's that's a thing of the past, folks. That's history. But they still have some of the same parts in the organization, and they still have this Yankee arrogance that they've carried since they were winning everything, since they were dominating the league, since they had the formula for success. They don't have it anymore. And I guess you can measure success in regular season wins. I'm glad they came just short of 100. They got 99 regular season wins. They won the division. Great. Great. But in the process of that this summer, what did I say? If you can be that bad, I'm not sure you could be that good. And I know someone listening remembers me saying that when they were slumping. If they can show you how bad they are, how can you expect them to magically be at their best when it matters the most? And they were bad. Strikeouts, errors, can't score. They reverted back to the bad version that we saw when they were slumping, when they were losing in the dog days of summer. That's what they were reduced to against the Houston Astros team that's just much better than them, top to bottom. Organization, players, system, strategy, analytics. The Astros own the New York Yankees. They are your daddy. And I thought about going to the game yesterday. And really what stopped me, you know, a few things. My sister was in town. I had to take her to the airport. She could have got an Uber. My my wife was away for the weekend weekend. I went and picked her up. She wanted to spend time with me. And they both had in their minds that I wasn't going to be available. And as I'm, you know, in the stadium Saturday night watching that mess, I knew that was the funeral. I knew it was over. I knew it was a wrap. That was it. That was the chance, right? All of the positive, uh, all of the uh, positive 
Yankee fans that say, don't give up on the team. They just got to win one game to turn this series around. When you saw that Saturday night, right, Aaron Judge cuts in front of Harrison Bader. He drops a ball. You don't get out of the inning there. Garrett Cole, who has been decent, better in the postseason versus his regular season, which wasn't much to write home about. But that thing about Garrett Cole unraveling, that thing about Garrett Cole mentally that a lot of us were worried about going into the postseason, how is Garrett Cole going to respond to adversity? Well, he ends up giving up a two-run bomb, and uh, that's immediate. You know, th that's, that's how the Astros move. They're kind of like uh, your, your older brother, right? Smack you in the head when you make a mistake. Caught you. And that's what they did to the Yankees the whole series. You make a mistake, we're going to make you pay. They got outclassed. They got outpitched. And barely outhit. But last night, you could tell the Astros were ready to go home. And the Yankees couldn't do enough to stop them. And I knew not to go to the stadium last night. It was a bozo funeral. I had no idea there were that many Astros fans even in the vicinity, but I watched that post game, and I watched how many of their fans were in there. I saw a video of a, a Astros fan sweeping a Yankees hat in Yankee Stadium. All Yankee fans should be embarrassed. They should feel some type of way about this. But here's the thing, folks. Don't expect changes to come. I already told you they won the division. They won 99 games. They were one of the last four teams standing. So that's a successful year, and attendance shot right back up this year. There were a ton of fans showing up to these games all season. They made a ton of money off of everything. The Yankees were blazing a trail in the beginning of the season where we talked about them as the next 1998 Yankees. These guys were going to win 110, 120 games. But they showed you who they were. And when someone shows you who they are, you're supposed to believe them, right? And I wanted to believe that they could do it, but I also in my head knew that they weren't equipped. So you can look at a bunch of things. I see people today talking about this IKF Donaldson trade. All-time fail. All-time fail. We should go back and dig up the calls and the reaction when that trade happened last winter. I think a lot of us were confused. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, we understand you got to get Gary Sanchez out of here. Gary Sanchez was done with all the mistakes and, and strikeouts and things that he did behind the plate that were slowing the Yankees down. But we've seen the Yankees DFA guys. We've seen the Yankees get nothing from a lot of different guys. Why was it that they had to make that trade to get Gary out of here and replace a Gio Urshela who there's a clip floating around. Brian Cashman himself says, you know, we appreciate everything Gio did, but he's not Josh Donaldson. Josh Donaldson's not Josh Donaldson. Josh Donaldson's not the Josh Donaldson you thought you were getting. And I remember saying, what version of Josh Donaldson do you expect to get this season? At age 36, he's cooked. And why would you bring that guy here after he called out your ace? Oh, to shake the room. <laughs> I get it. You need a spark. The Yankees always need a spark. The Yankees can never handle their business. They can never impose their will. They can never just go out and make it happen like they used to. They need some type of analytics or some type of change in the lineup. How many times are you going to change the lineup at the end of the season? And that goes back to the IKF trade. IKF, more like WTF. I don't know about that. People talking about Jeter coming back to help this team. Jeter's watching you roll out three different shortstops in the American League Championship. He's far from here. I think he posted that he was in New York game one of the DS. He didn't post that he was at the stadium. Why would he show up? This is far from the culture that he was in. People talking about Donnie Baseball being the next manager. I have news for you folks. After we were embarrassed last year. In, in Boston, not against Houston, against our other rival, the Red Sox, the other team that you got to hate the most. You hate the, you hate the Astros, you hate the Red Sox, one or both. I thought that was embarrassing, and the first move they made was to re-up Aaron Boone. So that told you everything you need to know. Instead of going to search, they read him up, so he's going to be back. And if you question the moves in the ALCS, question the entire organization— I've told you they give him a bucket of things he can and can't do. It's like a maze. You turn this way and it leads you this way. And he kind of defaults into these decisions because they don't make any sense. They're not moves that as a fan, you're thinking, all right, let's go to this guy. Let's go to Clark Schmidt. Let's go to him again. 
oh, actually, let's throw in these rookies at the bottom of the order. Let's ask these rookies who we were hesitant to call up all year. Let's ask these rookies to play shortstop against the Houston Astros, the biggest stage, the most intensity that, come on, man. These guys fumbled the ball, and they did it all year. You can go back to the Joey Gallo trade, right? The curse of Joey Gallo, his strikeouts live on. Man, they wanted to get him up out of here so fast, and they struck out without him. Andrew Benintendi comes here, he plays for a month, he gets hurt. Joey Gallo wasn't the problem. The Yankees' record before trading Joey Gallo was 70 and 34. The Yankees' record after trading Joey Gallo, 32 and 33. It was like a weird omen, like a curse on the Yankees. And I think they have a few curses. I think there's a lot of people talking about the Yankees' curse. Yeah, but it's their own negligence. It's their own arrogance. It's their own ways of doing things like this. When I'm thinking about going to the stadium yesterday at 4.15, I read this tweet from Brian Hoke. It says, Aaron Boone said that Chad Bowling, the Yankees' mental skills coach, was sending around highlight videos of the 2004 Red Sox this morning. Eduardo Perez also FaceTimed David Ortiz into Boone's office pregame. I swear to you, I thought someone was trolling. I thought there was a fake Brian Hoke account. I, I didn't retweet it. I just made sure that that's a, that's a real thing. That's, that's, that's real. One, it really happened. Two, they really let it hit the media. They let it hit the public. The Yankees are comprised of guys that grew up rooting for the Yankees. Garrett Cole, Yankee fan today, tomorrow, forever. Jose Trevino, who talked about being in Corpus Christi, Texas, dreaming of being a Yankee. His dad was a Yankees fan. IKF, who you've seen pictures of him in the bleachers as a kid. Harrison Bader, Bronxville native. Come on. You have these guys looking at 2004, how the Red Sox came back as they face elimination, potentially getting swept. Well, you know what that did? It planted in their heads that, wow, look at these guys losing. Look at these guys folding. And look at the Red Sox celebrating the American League championship on our field. It was the old Yankee Stadium. And now, last night, they put a mark on this new stadium that will never erase. The hated Houston Astros, the cheating Houston Astros, that now that cheating scandal seems like it was 10 years ago, but the crooked Houston Astros got to celebrate the American League championship in the new Yankee Stadium. And I watched that whole thing because I'm like, I, I always do this. I always watch trophy presentations in basketball, which, hey, this is... You know, not too far from me watching the Brooklyn Nets get swept in four games. Like, <laughs> I could do this, not hiding. Ready to talk about it. But the Yankees did so many things wrong. And I feel like the baseball gods were against them. The universe was against them. You get Josh Donaldson striking out. And then before the last game, he's like, oh, I feel like I didn't do that bad. But then you get him striking out. And what I hope is his last Yankee at bat. Just looking at the ball, and then we get a, a Chapman, Sonny Gray type smile out of him, a smirk out. What are you smiling about? I look at the Yankees right now, and I understand a lot of you want Brian Cashman gone. I get it, right? Because all I keep hearing is they need a new voice, right? It's not working. Shout out to Dom from, I think Dom's from East Rochester. Dominic calls in. And when they were slumping, Dominic would call in and start his call and say, it's not working. It's working for them. Business is good. They look at it as it's hard to win the World Series, even if you have a high payroll, even if you are the New York Yankees. It's a crapshoot. It's not a crapshoot for the Astros. There's guys over there going to their fourth World Series in six years, and in six years they've gone to the American League Championship with a bunch of different guys. I look at these Yankees, though, and I say, who played well in the postseason? Harrison Bader. Cashman traded Jordan Montgomery for him. Anthony Rizzo, that was also a Cashman trade. Wandy Peralta, Cashman traded Mike Talkman for him. Clay Holmes was another Cashman trade. And then Garrett Cole played well. John Carlo played well. Those are big signings that Cashman brokered. If you want Cashman gone, please give me a list of names to replace him. I've told you all season long, it is Brian Cashman's job until he wants to get up out of there, and I don't see that happening anytime soon. Why would you want to leave that job? 
The Yankees are what they are. They're built with a ton of flaws. They have injuries. And then you know what? They come up small in October. Walking into game one, I posted a video on my Twitter, on my Instagram, and I said, why can't this just be the October that they hit? That they leave no doubt. Everybody was worried about Garrett Cole. Everybody was worried about this bullpen. And what was the problem? The strikeouts, not being able to get runners on and bring them in, not being able to hit and score runs, being out homered. They build the team and it is flawed. So we have a whole winter of breaking down every false step with this team. We have a whole winter coming up of thinking about, wow, you know, Matt Carpenter. We gave, we gave Cashman props for Matt Carpenter, did we not? I think everybody was applauding that move. Got him for nothing. And he did nothing in October after he got hurt. It is what it is. We've seen it before. Like, we, we've seen it before. Uh, Encarnacion, when he got hit by pitch and came back, was ineffective a few years back. It's always, oh, wait till this guy comes back. Wait till this guy comes back. We're going to get healthy. We're going to have this guy in October. Nah, you need to develop talent. And it's clear that they like to hold their prospects, but I'm not sure about the development process because all you heard today on WFAN and anywhere you listen to the Yankees talk, the Baby Bombers era is over. The Baby Bombers failed. Well, you got Aaron Judge out of that, but do you have Aaron Judge? He's a free agent now. Oh, we got we got months, folks. We got uh, some time to talk about some things. The Baby Bombers failed. For me, Glaber Torres, you can get him up out of here. I've been the last like three trade deadlines. I've been saying, what can we get for Glaber? And that play last night, that's not on him. That's IKF. That's IKF's route to the ball. That's IKF being called on the play shortstop in game four after probably sulking and being on the bench like, oh, man, they're play playing rookies over me. I started 130 games at shortstop for the New York Yankees. I'm the New York Yankees shortstop. But here we are, and they have to go away from me. The outside noise got too loud. I could literally go on all day about Josh Donaldson, Gio Urshela, we got time for it. But for the New York Yankees, congratulations, you played yourself. It's another year that you can uh, you, you raise up your participation trophy that, yeah, you know, uh, 30 winning seasons. Yeah, we won the AL East. Yeah, we, we were in the postseason for the X amount of time in a row or X amount of time out of a certain amount of years. But you have set the standard and the culture to be going to the World Series and winning the World Series. And actually, what you just did was become the first team in postseason history to lose five straight championship series in a row. That's a new low. So if you don't sign Judge, right, and, you know, where are we going this this winter? If you don't re-sign Judge, uh, what is this team going to look like? I think this they're going to run it back. They're going to run it back with the manager. They are going to re-sign Judge. You're going to see a lot of the same guys, and you know who they're going to meet? The same guys in the postseason, the Houston Astros, the American League uh, runs through Minute Maid Park. And I've got a ton to say, but 877-337-6666. My name's Keith McPherson. I'm a Yankees fan. I love the Yankees, but we got to cook them tonight. I'll be right back.